Well, good day there, everybody. This is Joe. Hey, I got a couple little bags to show you. So this I got from a thrift store. This is a Targus computer bag. You guys might know that recently I returned from from the Mesa, Arizona area last week. And this particular bag is the perfect size to carry not only typing paper, but to carry, yes, the Hermes Rocket. This is my new carry bag for the Hermes Rocket. It's perfect size for it. A little miniature correction tape cartridge, typing paper, a blog article to put up on the blog here soon. Okay, let's look at this other bag. It's actually even smaller. It's this brown color. There's a front little pouch with a zippered opening. And in there, it has an AC adapter that says Brother. It has this. So the dangerous thing about going to the Mesa, Arizona area and visiting my friend Ted Monk is he showed me his typewriter collection and amongst his typewriter collection was a Canon Type Star. It's a thermal printing uh, miniature electronic uh, typewriter that also has an optional carbon film ribbon that's obsolete and not sold anymore but it uses thermal printing. Well Brother made similar machines uh, using almost the same kind of technology and this was even smaller than the Canon Typestar. So it has a little dark brown plastic lid that removes. There's two little brackets for holding spare printing cartridges. And these cartridges are obsolete. They're not made anymore and you can get them online at places like eBay, but they're very expensive. So without the ability to actually print anything, you would think that this is a useless machine. It's dead technology. Well, the fact of the matter is it's also a thermal printing typewriter using thermal paper. Well, here is the unit with a lid attached to the case. Here's the handle that flips up for carrying. And then underneath the battery compartment in the back is room for four D-cell batteries to power it off D-cells, or you can power it off the AC adapter. When you orient the typewriter so it's facing you, the Brother logo is going to be actually facing away from you. Probably a little bit of advertising is what they're figuring on. So we flip up the lid. It came with this one ribbon, which does work. It's only partly used. And it also came with an unused ribbon in a, in a package. So this is eight and a half inch wide thermal paper. And then you can drive the paper up and down as you need it. It has a 16 character LCD screen that can be used as a memory buffer. So you have the first 16 characters before they actually start printing. You can correct uh, your text on that screen using these correction features up here. It has like chiclet style calculator keyboard keys and the printing, it's printing right now and it's essentially entirely quiet. Uh, there's my margin and I hit the carriage return it's going to print the rest of whatever is in this memory buffer. And that's the only noise it makes but it's almost entirely silent, just as silent really as a laptop computer and about the same size I'd say actually. It's a pretty cool little device. Let's look at it in more detail. Okay, so let's orient ourselves to the keyboard, all the controls. So, of course, the power switch is up here. And this clear cover has two little grippy areas where you can flip it up. There is an integral paper bale. These two rollers are integral to the flip-up lid. Here's your platen roller. Here is the... Uh, carriage assembly where the cassette is uh, located and where the thermal printing head is located underneath there. Now there is a little red mark right here that indicates the printing position and then on the little tab next to it there's a red line that indicates the line where you're actually printing at. This knob right here is a little arrow that releases the tension on the roller so you can change a cassette and also feed the paper in. So like that and then you tuck the paper back underneath. Let's look at the 
keyboard starting in the upper left corner. These four buttons are for editing text. You have left and right arrows. You have a delete and an insert. This is for inserting and deleting text in the 16 character LCD display. This switch right here is your line spacing selector between one, one and a half, and two lines. This three position switch is your printing mode. The left hand position says NP is no printing, so basically you could just be typing on this little screen. It's not going to save anything, it's just for practice typing. It also gives you the ability to use the calculator function in the display without printing it. The middle position is called CP, that's correction printing. In the correction printing mode, you can be typing. The first 16 characters are buffered in the LCD display, and it also gives you the ability to edit those characters. In the right-hand position, DP is called direct printing mode. In the direct printing mode, it prints out immediately as you type it. It also scrolls through on the screen, but you can't edit it in the direct printing mode. Okay, on the left-hand side, you have left and right margins and tab set and clear. And all of these settings are set when you're in the direct printing mode. So you have to go to direct printing to set your margins and your tab sets. The green button is the second shift key, which gives you additional characters above each key. And then your, your main keyboard here is kind of similar to a brother typewriter. Margin release is on the left, backspace is on the right. You have your shift here and here, a shift lock. The shift lock uh, indicates it by a red light and you have to hit the shift key to release it. And of course your tab button for actually tabbing is right here. And all of the uh, shifted characters are pretty much standard to a modern typewriter. You do have a number one and an exclamation mark. Plus equals here is pretty much a standard American keyboard, a modern typewriter keyboard, one quarter, one half fractions, etc. You have a space bar. So some of the keys do repeat on their own. For instance, the space bar will repeat. And the backspace will repeat. And also your editing keys, your insert and delete, if you hold them down, they'll repeat, and also the, the cursor keys. But any other key that you press, like for instance, here's a W, it prints a W. Now if I hold down the repeat key, it's going to print a whole row of Ws. So that is a cool thing. You want to do like a dash and hit repeat, it'll repeat a whole line of dashes for you. And then on the upper right corner, this is the calculator area. And if you have the mode switch set to CP, which is correction printing, you can use the number keys and it will print out the results on paper as well as displaying them on the LCD display. Here's the clear button. But if you go to the no print mode, then when you do calculations, they show up strictly on the display and they're not actually printed. So the keys on this typewriter are kind of like calculator keys. They're kind of like chiclet keys. They're slightly dished in and they do give you little dots on the F and J, your home characters there. But it's um, very much a chiclet style typing. It's not a it's not a real laptop keyboard. So I'm going to start typing some characters and you're going to see the characters appear on the LCD display. I am in the correction printing mode. So I'm going to say um, th the quick you might notice that it begins to print them here. And it's pretty darn quiet. So now I'm going to type a carriage return. It'll actually finish typing the rest of what was in the LCD buffer and then it does the carriage return. So there is our printing right here. Now it's going to beep at you before the end of the margin. And if you end up at the margin with a word partially typed, it won't allow you to continue typing unless you use the margin release. And it's not too bad of a dot matrix display. It's definitely a dot matrix printing quality, but the 
carbon film ribbon, it looks the same. It's the same kind of dot matrix appearance to it. So it's very reminiscent of the old computer printer technologies. Now let's talk about uh, erasures and corrections. Let's say I type the space quick, but I forget the I space brown. And before you fill up the buffer, right, this is very important, before you fill up the buffer, if you use the back arrow, you go back here where I want to insert the I, I hit insert and it makes a space for me, I can hit I, then if I hit the right arrow it'll take me all the way back to where I continued. Now the other way of doing corrections, let's do that same thing, the quick CK, let's say I skip the I, and let's say I just noticed I skipped the I, I can simply arrow back to the C and type over it. it that's actually quicker if you catch the error early on before you get too many words typed. Now, of course, if you overflow the buffer on the LCD, it's going to print it. It's going to print the mistake. So, so you have to kind of pay attention to the LCD as you're typing. And it's if you're using this with the smoked plastic cover in place, you're not going to really easily be able to see the printing depending on the light on the paper itself. So you really kind of have to pay attention as you're typing. Pay attention to the LCD screen. So the weight of the unit with the dry cell batteries and the clamshell lid is 2,356 grams, which is pretty good. So there is a little uh, control knob next to the clear key, and that control knob is the contrast of the LCD screen. So you, based on your angle that you're viewing it at, you can control the contrast. There's a wide range of adjustment to it, and that's pretty cool. Now I'm making a lot of mistakes here because I'm kind of typing at an angle, but you can hear that it's really quiet. You can hear my fingers on the keys, but the printing is actually pretty darn quiet. The only real noise, I mean, it's almost, you can't even hear it even next to it. It's really when you do the returning, then you hear a little bit of that noise when it's, when it does the return of the, of the uh, print mechanism. There's a lot of resemblances in my mind between the EP20 and the Alpha Smart Neo in the sense that, first of all, uh, they both use an LCD display. Now, of course, the Neo's LCD display is much bigger. The uh, Brothers is only 16 characters wide, a single line. And the Neo uh, stores the text on an internal memory that is battery dependent. There's three AA batteries in there. And so it is, uh, it is a volatile memory. Whereas the EP20's uh, text is actually stored on thermal paper. So you can think of it as a thermal paper memory is one way of looking at it. Thermal paper is not as archival, certainly, as regular paper. You put this paper in a, in a hot environment, expose it to a lot of heat, it's going to go completely black and you'll lose all your text. But it is a, a certainly a temporary storage medium for text if you consider the process of writing is you're using this machine for some initial stream of consciousness brainstorming kind of writing. You're going to have this uh, paper printout of what you're typing and then you can go and do some edits by hand in that and then keyboard it into a word processor and into a computer and finish the writing process. So I see it as kind of a extension of the whole typewriter usage model of using typewriters in the early stage of of creative writing. Similar to what you would use a Neo for, because the Neo's uh, memory is volatile. If you have problems with the batteries or whatever, you're going to lose what's in here. So you really have to use the, your USB connector on the Neo and uh, send the text into a computer to save it uh, onto, onto a computer file. Uh, again, whereas with this one, it is a paper memory. There's no internal electronic memory. It's a paper thermal printer memory. Now, as far as the sizes of these, the Brother is a little bit taller, certainly, and the Neo is about the same width at its widest point as the Brother is, but the Neo, of course, 
tapers down toward the top of the machine where the brother is essentially rectangular. So the brother is a little heavier, slightly bigger, but not that much bigger. Well, besides the fact that it doesn't have an internal memory, it's essentially like an electronic typewriter, you might have the question as to how responsive is this, like between the time that you hit the key and it prints out. Uh, let's just look at that and see. I haven't really tested it myself. Well, so I'm going to uh, start printing at the start of this line right here, and I'm just going to use the number one key just so it'll, you can see when I press the key. Oh yeah, I want to go to the direct print mode. Of course, it helps to turn the machine on. So I'm going to, in the direct print mode, I won't be buffering through the LCD. So let's just start with the number one key. It's pretty quick. So, it looks to me, from just testing it here, that it's actually more responsive than a lot of daisy wheel electronic typewriters. The only delay you're going to experience is the end of line delay when it does a return, because it won't buffer your typing. You have to wait for it to do the carriage return. But Man, that's pretty quick. So it's a thermal printing typewriter using thermal paper. So how convenient is that? Well, uh, of course, thermal paper comes in rolls and you can get them as narrow as a two and a quarter inch wide cash register paper. You can get three and an eighth inch wide. And there's a few other oddball sizes, and then you can get the eight and a half inch wide, which I would recommend definitely if you're going to be writing with a device like this. Now, you could just carry the paper, a roll of paper like this one, carry it, you know, in your little travel bag, but then you're going to have to kind of just lay the paper behind the typewriter on the table, which might get a little messy. Maybe you're at a coffee shop and maybe there's some liquid on the table and you're going to get your paper all messy. Um, I built this little wooden bracket for my thermal paper roll a couple months ago. I think I featured it on this channel. So that's the other option is I could simply use this bracket behind the machine and that makes it a little more uh, practical. I would actually put the machine up on the ledge right behind. There's a little ledge on this bracket. So raise the machine up a little bit, have the paper fed into it like that, and that makes a nice little uh, Jack Kerouac style endless roll of thermal paper, electronic on the road typing perhaps, battery powered by four D cell batteries. I don't know the uh, life of the batteries. I haven't. I just put them in today. Also powered by an optional AC adapter you can use. Now there's another creative thing you might want to consider doing with one of these if you had it, and that is have it with batteries so it's totally portable, and get that three and an eighth inch wide thermal paper, the kind that is used in uh, most ca cash register receipts here in the United States certainly. Then you can do public poetry writing. You can do thermal poetry writing, hot poems, thermal poems, onto thermal paper, dot matrix, computer-esque thermal poems with this little guy. That's another crazy idea you could do, and it looks really, really portable, easy to carry around with a little bag. So I was using this thermal paper roll on my regular typewriters, so I have to, I just flipped it around now, so the thermal side will print on the machine. There it is. Jack Kerouac style hot thermal poems and beat literature writing machine. Battery powered or AC powered. You know, philosophically, a lot of us typewriter aficionados have kind of a problem uh, some of us do with electronic or electric typewriters. I know I sure did for a long time, and I think it's taken a little bit of time for me to get used to the idea that they are a uh, usable form of writing technology. Isn't that funny to say But in the year 2018? But it's true. I think I would give credit at least partly to my friend Ted Monk for uh, enlightening me as to the magic of electric typewriters. But I don't think this device, this EP20 brother, is a 
permanent replacement for a manual typewriter. Um, with manual typewriters, if you know, eventually if cloth ribbons were not being manufactured anymore, we probably could figure out how to dye half inch wide strips of cloth <laughs> with something that'll print on a manual typewriter. You can make, you know, plant based dyes or something if you think about uh, the collapse of civilization or whatever. But this typewriter doesn't require ribbons, but it does require thermal paper, which is a little bit more difficult to make, I would assume, in a post-civilization era. So really this is dependent upon the current economy to continue supplying us with thermal paper. Luckily we have this huge economy of scale of uh, the commercial marketplace using thermal printed cash register receipts. At the very least those will be around for a while longer I would assume. So if you can't get eight and a half inch wide paper you can certainly get three and an eighth inch for a while longer, I would assume. So I'm hoping that this kind of machine will remain viable for a while longer. It is fun to use. I really like the the size of it, the weight of it. It's kind of cute. It really is. Uh, and I can type pretty fast on it, surprisingly, once I get going. And once I'm monitoring my LCD display and doing my corrections as I go, before they buffer out of the display, I seem to be able to do pretty good. So that's it, pretty much. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave them down below. Uh, I have, as I indicated, I have the complete owner's manual, operator's manual for the machine. If you have any questions about the usage of it, drop them down below. And until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. Happy typing, stay creative, and we'll see you later. Bye.